Hey, middle schoolers. I'm sorry I couldn't figure out the whole um, Instagram live video thing on Wednesday night. I mean, I know how to video, but um, I decided just to go with a pre-recorded video and get Blaine to post it instead. So I wanted to, to kind of go over our talk sheet that I posted Wednesday night. Um, I don't know if anybody has looked at it yet or not. But if you want to go ahead and look at it before you watch the video, um, it might uh, help to follow along. Uh, but before you look at it, or if you've already looked at it, uh, just keep this in mind. We are talking about Noah builds a big boat for a big flood. And um, what we learn is that the world in Noah's day was filled with evil. Increased population had led to increased sin. And God was sad because of all the rotten conditions of the sinful world. And we're not talking about today, which it sounds kind of like we are talking about today, but we are talking about the time which Noah lived. So God decided to destroy humankind except for Noah and his family. And when you think about atheists, agnostics, and skeptics, people like that, uh, they see this as making God an angry and unmerciful kind of person wanting to punish people who cross him. And some of you may have had teachers like that. I know my kids have had teachers like that who were, they, they enjoy failing their students. I don't understand that. But um, some people see God this way because of what they learn through Noah and the ark. But we know as Christians in reality that that's not God. He did not take this lightly. This this had been going on for a long, long time, hundreds of years. Uh, people had been acting extremely ungodly, been very sinful. Um, and we know God is merciful, but we also know that he knows who is going to come to him and who isn't. And he was going to destroy the world and restart the human race with just Noah's family. So before we get into the talk sheet, um, think about, um, let me ask you a question. What is one thing your parents or grandparents maybe ask you to do that you don't like doing? So think about that. Um, and then what's one thing that they ask you to do that maybe you love doing? And we'll think about those things as we go along too. And before we start to get into uh, the scripture, uh, I want you to know that at the time Noah was asked by God to build the ark, he was around 600 years old. And I know we talked a few weeks ago about how back then people lived longer than they do now. Um, so Noah was around 600 years old, and the Bible tells us it took him 120 years to build the ark. So that is a lot of time there. And um, we also, uh, some of the theologians that I have read or heard speak have said that they believe that before this time, it had not actually rained on the earth. There had been no rain from the sky. So that would make Noah's, you know, faithfulness even more amazing because how can you prepare for something that you've never seen. So going to our, our talk sheet, if you could ask Noah one question about the challenges he faced by trusting God's plan for him at the time, what would that be? So think about one thing that you would like to ask Noah. Um, how you keep the faith maybe is one of the things I would probably ask him. How do you keep the faith for 120 years, especially because people were making fun of him. And we all know none of us likes to be made fun of. At least I don't, and I'm pretty sure that y'all don't. So think about uh, what you would like to ask him about that time. Um, going on to number two, um, tell me what you think if you agree or disagree. The first question, God's boat building project strengthened Noah's faith. Um, do you think that's true or not? I do know that a lot of times 
if we accept a challenge from God that seems impossible, um, it can it does build our faith. Um, next, Noah doubted God while building the big boat. Again, it took him 120 years to build this boat. Uh, that's your opinion, but I, I believe that we, I mean, I know that we all doubt God at times, so I'm pretty sure that he did. But again, that helps to strengthen your faith too. Next, Noah built the boat because he was afraid of God. Um, I don't know if he was afraid of God in the way that this is implying, like he was scared to death that God was going to punish him, or more, he respected God, and so he obeyed him. The way that when your parents, or my parents when I was younger, asked me to do something, uh, sometimes I admit I did stuff because I was afraid my parents were going to spank my rear end if I didn't, or, you know, ground me, punish me some other way. And sometimes I did it because I had very good loving parents and I respected them. And so I did what they wanted me to do. Um, next, Noah's family went along with Noah because they had no choice. Everybody has a choice. Things were different in that day. So more often than not, uh, whatever the husband and father decided, that's what went. That's that's the way the family went. But everybody does have a choice. Um, and we may get into it in a later session, but you'll see um, later on when uh, Lot was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, his wife chose to look back after God told them not to. So she made her choice. Hearing Noah's story strengthens my faith. So that's something uh, for you to answer for yourself. Um, whether when you hear about what Noah did, does that strengthen your faith and help you to realize that you could do that too? So number three, circle one, do you think it was fair or unfair for God to destroy humankind through the flood? Again, that's your opinion. Um, we talked about before, it was very, very sinful, very sinful people that um, refused to follow God. Um, and I know we've discussed it before that God doesn't let, God doesn't, uh, you know, let anybody die without giving them a chance to come to Christ. And in Second Peter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. In other words, even when people are saying ugly things about God, when they are making fun of Christians, when they are persecuting Christians in other countries, they kill Christians. Um, God still loves those people, and he still wants them to come to Christ. So, God, And we know that God's punishment for sin will come again, because like in Noah's day, God has been patient but the day is coming when his holiness and justice will again require the punishment of sin for those who refuse to turn to Christ. For uh, number four, if we're going to look at it. How do you think people today are like the people living in Noah's day? And I want to read uh, Genesis 6, verses 5 and 6. Um, again, hopefully you read Genesis 6, verses 5 through 22. Um, before you started this video and looking at um, the talk sheet. But uh, chapter 6, verses 5 and 6 says, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So when you look back at number four again, number question number four, how are people today like the people living in Noah's day? Do you think that most people today are like the people living in Noah's day? That they're all about themselves? That they're mostly evil? Um, do you think it's really just half of the people, roughly? 
do you think that really hardly anybody is like that, just a few people? Or do you really think that nobody living today is evil and sinful like the people were in Noah's day? So I'll let you think about that one. Number Question number five. Circle the one answer. The one answer. I know y'all usually like to circle more than one. But circle the one answer that best indicates who you are most like in the account of what happened to Noah. Do you think you're like Noah's neighbors making fun of him while he was building the ark? Do you think you're like Noah's family? You kind of trust him and you're going along with him because you're family. Or do you think you're like Noah? You're trusting in God and then you're doing what he's asked you to do and having faith even through your doubt. And our last question, number six, God asked Noah to build a boat, something that seemed foolish at the time. And we discussed that many theologians think it had never rained before. Um, Noah obeyed. Why was it a good thing for Noah to do all that God asked him to do? What is one good thing that God has asked of you that maybe you don't want to do? And why is it a good thing for you to go ahead and do it anyway? So think about these things. Every time Noah and we, every time Noah did what God asked and we do what God asked, his faith was strengthened and our faith will be strengthened too.